These pictures are from April last year. The UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres met, among others, with the Russian President Putin. He called on Moscow to end the war against Ukraine. He came as an ambassador of peace, the UN chief said, and that he had an interest in doing everything possible to end the war and the suffering of the people, Guterres stressed at the time. A few months later, during the recently concluded World Economic Forum in Davos, Switzerland, Guterres said he did not believe the war in Ukraine would end, but stressed that the United Nations was already in talks with Ukraine and Russia on peace negotiations and that efforts should continue. We are doing everything we can do to reduce the damage and suffering, Guterres is quoted as saying on the UN website. More bridges need to be built to preserve peace and human rights, he said. We speak today with a former member of the US Foreign Intelligence Agency, CIA, Raymond McGovern. He worked for the CIA for 27 years and retired in 1990. Raymond McGovern is a Catholic and believes that no one other than Pope Francis himself could have an influential role in bringing about immediate peace negotiations in the Ukraine conflict. His personal appeal to Pope Francis and more on the topic now here at the EWTN-TV UN blog. Good day. A note from the editor, the content of this interview and the views expressed in it merely reflect the views of the interviewee. These views do not necessarily reflect the views of EWTN-TV or CNA Deutsch. I now welcome in Raleigh, North Carolina, my interview guest today, Raymond McGovern. Good afternoon, Ray, and thank you for taking the time. The all-knowing Wikipedia describes you as a former Central Intelligence Agency CIA employee turned political activist. Is that correct? Well, that's accurate, uh, but it requires some explanation. Uh, I was a Soviet specialist, a Russian specialist, and when I retired, uh, things uh, started falling apart in the world. Uh, Russia was very much engaged in this, and so as a way of paying back uh, for the education afforded me by taxpayer money, I decided that I was obligated to speak out and draw from my half century now of knowledge about Russian leaders, their plans and their intentions. I would also like to mention that you are Catholic and like Pope Francis were trained by Jesuits, correct? That's right. Uh, I went to Jesuit high school and college and uh, I owe a great debt uh, to the instruction and the, uh, well, the values instilled in me, uh, first and foremost, to tell the truth without fear or favor, and then lastly, but not leastly, Ignatius's dictum, uh, to be a man for others and to follow the preferential option for the poor, which U.S. Catholic bishops have been very insistent on it's decades ago, but they mentioned that no one is entitled to accumulate still more wealth uh, that he doesn't need when others uh, lack the bare necessities of life. If that sounds radical, it comes right from Jesus. Ray, Sie waren 27 Jahre lang CIA analyst and Ray, you were a CIA analyst for 27 years and served seven U.S. presidents from President John F. Kennedy to George H. W. Bush, and you provided three of those presidents with daily intelligence briefings. Although you have been called controversial and have been attacked by many people, for some of your views, one thing we can say for sure, and that is that you are a foreign 
affairs expert and a long-time Russia specialist, and that the current dramatic situation in the Ukraine-Russia war is of great concern to you as well, and that as a Catholic you believe that no one other than Pope Francis himself is in a position to contribute significantly to ending the conflict. So you believe that the Pope has that uh, power? I think the Pope has to try. Uh, whether he has the power to do that is unknown until he tries. Uh, we have some had sad history here. Uh, we have the history of World War II, where the Pope was pretty much silent. Uh, Albert Camus, after the World War II, was asked by the Dominicans to come to a monastery and talk about the role of the church during that Second World War. And he said something very astounding for an atheist. He said, I kept waiting for a voice from the Vatican, a voice from Rome, and none ever came except in the form of an encyclical, and no one knew what an encyclical was. So more recently, uh, we have actually Pope John Paul II trying to stop the war, the unjust and illegal war against Iraq in the spring of uh, 2003. Uh, you may recall that he sent a special emissary, uh, Cardinal uh, Pio Lachi, uh, to Washington. It was the 5th of March, 2003, just two weeks before the invasion and the attack on Iraq by U.S. and U.K. forces. Uh, he told he told President Bush that this was not going to end up well. Uh, he said, uh, well, Bush said, well, look, listen, there are Al-Qaeda in Iraq. And Cardinal Lahi said, show me the evidence. We don't think there are. Well, how do I know this? Uh, uh, Cardinal Lahi said this several weeks afterwards. Uh, he had to remind the president that he came as a personal emissary of Pope John Paul II, that he had a special personal lever, letter to deliver. And when Bush kept talking about the need for democracy, uh, uh, the cardinal said, look, I'm here to talk about Iraq. It's illegal. We want you to stop and not do this because the, the results will be disastrous. Two weeks later, Bush invaded. Now, that that was clearly illegal. The UN uh, Je Secretary General condemned it later as illegal and unjust. So what could happen now? Well, I leave it to your imagination as to what with this situation in Ukraine becoming far more dangerous than the war in Iraq because you have two nuclear armed entities vying against each other. Or what might the Pope be inclined to do, empowered to do, or at least try to do in these circumstances. We could talk more about that later. According to Vatican Media in December 2022, Pope Francis has renewed his plea for peace in Ukraine. With the war, we are all defeated, even those who did not take part in it and who, in cowardly indifference, watched this horror without intervening in a peacemaking way, the Pope said in the preface of a book that presents all of his words on the Ukraine war, collected since February 2022. The book is called an encyclical on peace in Ukraine. The editor, journalist Francesco Antonio Grana, describes it as a testimony to the commitment of the Pope and the Holy See to mediation. In your opinion, Ray, couldn't the fact that the Pope is a religious figure, belongs to a certain religion, be an obstacle? And his efforts would be seen too religiously and could distract from the political aspects. How do you see that, Ray? I don't believe that that should be a blocking stone at all. Now, the Pope speaks for more than just Catholics. Many people look up to the Pope. I mentioned before that uh, Albert Camus was looking for, for a sign or a statement from Rome during World War II. Many people, not only Catholics, but others, take the Pope as a moral leader. 
and for, for, for God's sake, literally, we need moral leadership in these days and times. So uh, when, when the Pope or the Vatican or the Catholic Church is accused of meddling in politics or in economics, well, that's a charge that got Jesus of Nazareth killed. He didn't keep his mouth quiet. He saw the oppression of the people. He saw the oppression by the Roman and the Jewish religious authorities. He spoke out against it. And had he not done so, he, had gone, he might have gone uh, safely to sleep comfortably in his bed as a Hebrew prophet. So what the Pope, I would hope, uh, would consider doing is sticking his neck out at least as far as Jesus of Nazareth did and it, that is pretty far. And whether the, whether the uh, criticism, uh, bear with the criticism of being involved in economics or politics, because in the real world, economics or politics is the form that justice or injustice takes. To a person, Raymond McGovern, on the person of Raymond McGovern, he was a young officer responsible for analyzing Soviet policy in Vietnam. From 1981 to 1985, he was among the officers in charge of intelligence who reported daily to President Ronald Reagan and Vice President George H. W. Bush. Subsequently, as one of the senior analysts, he was responsible for preparing the CIA's daily report to the U.S. president. Upon his retirement, he was awarded the Intelligence Commendation Medal by President Bush. However, he returned this medal in March 2006 in protest of the involvement of CIA employees in torture in Iraq. As for the Ukraine war, Raymond McGovern was described in a 2022 Ukrainian government report as a spokesperson spreading narratives consistent with Russian propaganda. I asked Ray McGovern if he would record an appeal to the Pope and that we would try through our connections to the Holy See at the UN in Geneva to forward this message to the Pope. He agreed and here is his video message, the appeal from Raymond McGovern to His Holiness Pope Francis. Your Holiness, I remember quite well when you came and spoke before our Congress in the United States in Washington, D.C., and uh, made a, uh, an eloquent speech at the end of which you pointed out what you call the real problem. And what you call the real problem was the blood-drenched arms trade. Now, if you look at an underlying cause for the conflict in Ukraine, you will see that the blood-soaked arms trade is the culprit. People are making millions, even billions on this war. People appropriating the money in the U.S. Congress before which you spoke are in receipt of proceeds from the sale of these weapons, and this has to stop. And so I would just uh, appeal to you to follow the good example of your predecessor, Pope John Paul II, and send a emissary, send an emissary to Washington before there's a nuclear exchange between Russia and the United States. I do not say that lightly. This is the first time in my half century of experience where it looks like the two nuclear powers are not taking heed of the dangers, but are likely, perhaps not likely, but risking a nuclear conflict. So what I would suggest is that just as uh, uh, John Paul II sent uh, Pio Lachi to talk with the president, uh, that there are many seasoned Vatican di diplomats that you, your holiness, could send to Washington Joe Biden is a Catholic, and that might be a plus here. Uh, maybe he would listen. 
because he is not getting any moral guidance from any of his advisors, nor is he getting it anywhere else. So I would say with your unparalleled access to world leaders, with your reputation for honesty, humility, and most of all, your unbiased attitude toward this conflict, you could do what your predecessor John Paul II did and send emissaries around, perhaps not only to Washington, but to Kiev, to France, to, to Paris, to, to Berlin. I mentioned Paris and Berlin because I hope your advisors have told you that the, the Chancellor of Germany and the President of France have just confessed that they that they deceived, they deceived the Russians in saying that they would encourage the Ukrainians to give a measure of autonomy to the Donbass. They now say this was all just a trick to give the West time to build up the Ukrainian armed forces. They said that. So the deceit is out in the open. They proudly admit it. And uh, your emissaries have to kind of say, well, you know, what about this? Is this true? And is this just? And should we not have peace talks now on the basis of honesty rather than duplicity?